Howdy folks! Uh, wow, that feels weird to write down. Almost as weird as it will likely feel reading from this script. Uh, good job, uh, past Mark, because it certainly does. Uh, but as I'm doing something a little different uh, this time around, I'll need to be checking a few dates and stuff, and I figured this was the best way to do it. Uh, fair warning, this is not only going to be uh, probably one of the longer of the blog-style videos I do here, um, but it's going to contain a lot of in-depth discussion about my own mental health issues. Um, if you find that sort of thing triggering, this is fair warning. Um, it might touch on some other aspects of that as well, like um, some abusive behaviour on my part, etc. Um, so just fair warning on that as well. So, uh, a quick synopsis of the time period I'm going to be discussing, and a bit of a general timeline on me. Uh, when I started doing DDP yoga for the first time, it was around the middle of January 2013, and I was 375 pounds. Uh, when I first checked myself into an emergency room with what I was almost certain were mental health complaints, uh, I'll get to why I was certain of those in a second, um, it was January of 2016, and I was around 200 pounds-ish. Um, and I was doing DDP yoga and various other things, um, taking my dogs for um, several kilometer walks, uh, pretty much daily. Uh, skip to the start of September 2018, uh, and I was over 400 pounds. Um, I'm not quite sure exactly how far over. Um, I didn't sort of do a day one way in. Um, but anyway, this is the uh, sort of the story of what happened between those dates. Um, for those of you who have been lucky enough to never have suffered a mental health issue, um, or one that's severe enough to require treatment, uh, I'm fairly sure most folks have suffered minor mental health issues. Um, it's, yeah, in case of whether or not you are aware that's what you're suffering from. Uh, but what's peculiar about them is that you suffer from them long before you realise that you're suffering from them. Um, if I look back on uh, my life as a whole before I was diagnosed, I can pinpoint several times in my life where I'd felt um, almost, if not quite so desperately anxious, um, and anxious for a long period of time. Um, one of the key differences, I suppose, this time around um, was I wasn't single. Um, which makes a huge difference. Um, I was also a father, which uh, made the biggest difference of all. Um, so, um, I have no contact with my immediate family for reasons that are more or less not really within the scope of what I want to talk about on this blog. Uh, and as such, I'm not going to go into too many details. I uh, This isn't in my script, but I will also say as a side note, I don't know that they'll ever see this. They might. Um... But I was raised in an environment where the mental health of one of the members of my family was sort of a family secret. Um, to the extent I didn't really know about it myself, or at least I didn't have like a label for it and knew about it in any real capacity, more or less until I was a teenager. I think I was maybe 12, actually, but close enough. Um, it affected a huge part of my life growing up. Um, I never felt it received proper treatment um, for various reasons, and as a result... Um, of both uh, the behaviours that keeping it secret sort of brought on me and the lack of treatment, it forced me into behaviours um, that aren't something I ever wanted for Lathander. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard the name, that's uh, my son. He's currently four. Uh, that said, by the time I got as far as seeking medical help, I was anxious essentially to the point of being completely unable to complete basic household tasks, uh, let alone doing DDP yoga. Hi, Medivh. Um... This is my cat who wonders why I'm sat reading from the script on my computer. So you all get kidding too. Uh, people associate anxiety with doing something that um, makes them nervous. Now what I was diagnosed with was a general anxiety disorder, uh, eventually. I'll get to that in a moment. Um, and I don't feel the phrase does it justice. Um, TV and film often make um, anxiety something that the strong can heroically overcome and the weak suffer from. Um, it, you know, it's interesting to me because you never see a character with no legs on TV often being shown to bravely overcome his lack of legs and start walking. Um, I digress. Uh, the best way I can think of describing general anxiety is this. Imagine you are perfectly okay one second, uh, then feeling like the next second you're being chased through uh, a dark, cold um, series of woods by a pack of wolves. Uh, there's nothing you can do about it. You can't, like... Even if you're being chased by a pack of wolves, you can at least run away. That's an action you can take. But the thing is, nothing's chasing you. Um, 
And what you'll find is that anything you do try and do will be led by almost total irrationality. Um, and you end up hurting those around you. Um, you don't sort of, um, and again, I'm going off script a tiny bit here, but you, know, you don't literally feel like you're being chased by wolves, but that's the level of anxiety you get, and you'll try and pick a course for it. And, like, imagine getting angry at the wolves in that situation. <coughs> you'll find something that's completely innocuous and get angry at that instead. Uh, if that analogy doesn't work for you, um, imagine you are watching a horror movie, and there is that moment right before the jump scare in horror movies where all of the music stops, and you're more or less sat there waiting to get startled. Um, now imagine that lasts for 12 hours. So, yeah. Uh, and so, got myself to a doctor to... Um, have to, you know, stop doing pretty much anything. Um, it's many ways, you know, detail you don't need, but I am going to point out here, because um, I think I'd be remiss not doing it, how excellent my doctor was then, and has always been. Um... He could have put me on a waiting list that would have seen me um, sort of waiting an extra 6 to 12 weeks to get looked at. Um, what he did when he saw that um, I was completely unable to do anything was refer me to the emergency room, uh, where I was seen the same day. Um, it's not quite the end of the, the story when it comes to diagnosis, though, as um, you, you know, it's not the same as a broken arm. Um, I spent the next three or four weeks being treated at my local mental health facility. Um, I wasn't an inpatient. I wasn't actually kept at the facility as um, it wasn't strictly necessary. I have never been prone to self-harming or things of that nature. And I wasn't a danger to others or anything like that, strictly speaking. Uh, I did it daily, though. And I had uh, different medications given to me. Uh, the initial thought for various reasons was that I might be bipolar, um, which is not my current diagnosis. Um, mental health is um, one of those wonderful things that's both instantaneous and fluid, so I can't say I'm not bipolar, it may crop up at some point. Um, but all the while through this period my anxiety was getting like slowly worse and worse, it wasn't being treated. Um, and at my lowest I was basically sofa bound, um, I was unable to leave the house without company, um, I was extremely uncomfortable being left on my own, um, and I had no attention span. Um, I was um, unable to do anything for longer than five minutes. I was having full-blown daily panic attacks. Um, and I, you know, a panic attack, if you've never had one, is exhausting. So I was just permanently exhausted when trying to do anything at moments I was feeling more rational. Um, I also, I didn't note it in my script here, and I don't know why. I had a real thing, and I still do a little bit, for open portals. I don't like... Um, when I'm feeling particularly bad, I don't like doors being left open or curtains being left undrawn, that kind of thing. Um, so, excuse me. <coughs> one take, one do it all that. For anyone who is still watching, who is not totally and utterly depressed, uh, the irony, I know, uh, by all of this, I am pretty much, yeah, this is pretty much the low point of the story here. So it's time for things to start going up. Um, so where did things go? Um, well... I learned there is one thing about being a guy who will be quite happily post anything on Facebook, and I do, including all of this, had various posts at times. Uh, there are a lot of people willing to help. Um, the names I'm going to say here are going to be nothing to most of you watching this, um, but I'd be very much remiss if I didn't do a few thank yous. Uh, first, my fiance Susan, um, who was wonderful, and for obvious reasons of her living with me, bore the brunt of all this. Um, and to our good family friends, uh, Leslie and Sammy. Um, all three of you were basically um, anchor points for me the first year after my diagnosis. And, you know, not for nothing, um, I don't necessarily remember that much of that year. The, the concentration thing doesn't help with that, um, nor did some of the medication. Um, but I'm sure at times it was completely thankless being there for me. And in moments of irrationality, um, I probably said a lot of things that were not quite so nice to you, um, angry at you for um, causing anxiety in me when you probably weren't. Um, learning when you're being irrational about that kind of thing is probably one of the hardest things to do with generalized anxiety. Um, and having friends who get it and stick by you has proved to be one of the best things that could have happened to me, in all seriousness. Um, the next big positive was getting on the right medication and eventually the correct amount, which is a whole other battle. Um, 
I know a lot of folks are going to feel like this is an irresponsible thing to say, but when you've been having constant panic attacks, um, anxiety medication is like being wrapped up in a huge warm duvet. Um, it really is the best thing. Um, and you know, Make of it what you will. I know it's not for everyone. Some people are not fan of that, but I find it I, I find it wonderful, frankly. Um, another positive, which is sort of a, a mixed blessing, as I'll get to later, uh, anxiety tends to come in episodes anyway. Um, so, you know, you, you get better over time. Um, the whole ordeal, to be honest, wasn't my first episode of anxiety. It, I'm almost definite it's not going to be my last. Um, it probably wasn't even the worst. Um, I am slightly better handled, um, equipped to handle these things these days um, from what I've learned from all this. Um, I've also learned what triggers me um, when things are bad. And things can be bad. I can wake up and have a bad day. Sometimes it lasts a week. In this case, it lasted almost a whole year. Um, but um, in, in case you're wondering, incidentally, uh, my own triggers, uh, large crowds do it to me. Uh, as I said, open portals, like doors and windows, can get me. Um, odd one, this may be something from my childhood that I have no memory of happening, but uh, being left on my own at grocery store checkouts, like in the queue, if someone has to run up, like forget something and runs off and gets something, um, that, that gets me every time. I Look, they're not rational. <laughs> That's kind of the point. If they were rational, it would be more like a phobia. Um, so, you're probably asking yourself at this point, uh, we are 11 minutes in, so pretty definitely thank you for sticking with me if you're still here. Um, why am I talking about all of this on a blog about DDP yoga? Um, given we're pretty far in, no, I've stopped mentioned I didn't work out, but starting it. Well, so first off, I was dealing with a lot of guilt. Um, I mean, generally... Um, I'd been dealing with that for some of the things I'd done over the first year anyway, as I you know, mentioned to various people. And there, you know, there are some people I'm, you know, who didn't stick by me for various reasons. And I get it. Um, I kind of felt like crap about whether I left things with DDP Yoga specifically. Um, I'd been blogging regularly leading up to the sort of the start of that year. They, so things had sort of tapered off. Um, looking at a couple of the last ones I did, I could see the start of things. Um, one of the other reasons they tapered off was I did have a new board around at the time, so, you know. Uh, but, I mean, I won the, the DDP Yoga Blog Challenge doing the blogs, um, and it seemed to all intents and purposes, to me, let alone anyone else, like I'd won that and then kind of just dropped off the map. Um, I've never really been able to separate, and I still can't, frankly, um, the irrational feeling on how that may have looked to people involved in the community, uh, and especially like Dallas and other people who decided I was worthy of reward, to how it actually looked to them. Um, but the whole thing made the feeling of restarting and being public about restarting really daunting. Um, it wasn't the only issue, uh, mind you. Coming out of the, the year I'm discussing in detail here, um, I was weighing in at more or less 330 pounds, which is what happens when you have a habit of stress eating and you've more or less been forced to stop all physical activity. Um, but that, that said, you may have noticed that's not the way I mentioned at the start, and there's still a gap of like a year and a few months at least that we're talking about here. Well, first off, medical issues apparently come in threes. Um, the thing you can all see moving behind me is a dog there chewing on its leg. That's not distracting in the least. Uh, consider it a bonus for staying with me this long. Um, medical issues. Uh, I had my tonsils removed, which, um, for those of you who had it done as a kid, it's not the same thing as an adult. It's actually pretty major surgery. So I had that done. And six months after that, I was hospitalized um, for two weeks with the, uh, for emergency gold bladder removal. Um, and I was hospitalized for two separate weeks. I was hospitalized for a week, sent home with painkillers, then two weeks later, sent to hospital to have my gold bladder removed. So that was a thing that happened. Yeah. Um, it's one way to start losing weight, organ removal. Um, but I was also, in many ways, I, I spent the time trying to rebuild the rest of my life. Um, that involved getting a job, although I am currently jobless right now for um, the, the contract I was working with ended. So somebody hire me, damn it. Um, rebuilding my finances um, was a thing as well. You take a year off work unexpectedly. We do get sick, uh, paid sick pay in Ireland, but it's not what I was earning. Um, I spent the time rebuilding a few relationships with people and um, 
unfortunately, and I'm not going to go into detail, removing myself from some that I felt were toxic to my environment. Uh, the co couple of other things I did, for those of you who follow me on Facebook, you'll be aware of these. Um, I despise the phrase coming out, but it's what we appear to have all accepted. Uh, I came out publicly as being polyamorous, uh, which for those of you who don't know, means I have uh, multiple consenting romantic partners. Um, presently, we'll, we'll get on to... Um, actually, we'll get on to that in a second. That's what happens if I go off script a little bit. Um, I also came out as genderqueer which, for those of you who haven't heard the phrase, is shorthand for not really identifying as male or female, and seeing yourself as somewhere in between, but not being entirely sure where. Um, so, um, for those of you who may wonder on that front, uh, again, going off script a little bit here, I'm currently sticking with male pronouns. That might change. I am having some feelings about using gender-neutral ones, but for the moment, it's all good using the male ones. Um, I also started a relationship, um, towards the end of that first year with my current uh, second partner, uh, the lovely Lexa, uh, who has been nothing short of amazing when it comes to both these issues and everything else. Uh, she definitely doesn't escape without a mention on it. Um, all in all, it was quite the roller coaster year for positive mental health steps. Uh, but I was still neglecting myself physically. And in many ways, I was sort of, and I think I said this back on the first of my new blogs. Uh, I was waiting to get better, um, which turned out to be another 70 pounds of weight gain and still no DDP yoga. Uh, I suppose in many ways what finally got me off the couch um, was the realisation of like, hey, you've worked really hard on your mental health and things are going really well. And then I bent over to tie my shoelaces and that was a major excursion, which it was way back when I started DDP yoga originally. Uh, so one day I just decided to hit working out from step one again, and that was unbelievably hard. Um, I mean, it was hard physically, but I expected that. And what I wasn't really prepared for was the wave of kind of a combination of nostalgia and frustration that hit me when I first had to modify everything I'd been taking for granted. I used to find energy quite quaint towards the end. Um, and yeah, like anyone who watches these bloggers will know where I am with that now. So um, how could I deal with all of this rather than internalizing it and kind of wearing the last couple of years as a chain around my neck. Answer was to start blogging about it. Um, and hopefully that's why you're watching now. So I'm three months in right now, and rather poetically, I'm at £375, which is um, where I was um, to start off with, as you'll recall from the start of this blog, back on the very first time I started to be yoga. And it's quite poetic to be there as I am starting to take the weight loss side of things a bit more seriously. Um, I still have bad days. I have no doubt going forwards I will have some bad weeks. Who knows, I may even have a bad year. But everyone in the, the DDPY community has been extremely welcoming of me coming back, including DDB himself, which was a huge boost. Um, I don't think without the support of the community and of um, DDP necessarily writing this blog, uh, would necessarily even be possible. Um, and I don't regularly do this with these blogs, but um, like I've been going for 18 minutes now. If anything I have said um, has been helpful to you, or just hearing someone talk about the mental health issues they've had um, is useful or you feel healing to you in any way, um, or maybe me talking about getting on track physically has helped, um, share this blog. Um, just share it on your feed um, maybe we can encourage someone who feels a bit like I did to get things going maybe for the first time or maybe starting again um, also some of you may have questions um, if you do have questions about anything I've said here feel free to uh, leave them in the comments on the video uh, or if that feels a bit um, too public for you uh, add me on Facebook. I add, Anyone who requests, I add them as a friend on Facebook. I add as a friend on Facebook. And then you can just I add me. Um, so, yeah. Ask me questions that way if you like. Uh, this got incredibly long, but I am really glad to have had this recorded. So, until tomorrow, folks. Peace. I'm out.